Skip, you do know that, right? You know, football is a small window in all of our lives. It is. It is. And I realized that a long time ago when I started playing, which is why I tried to make the most of it while I was doing it. And I, I think that's why you nice self-promoted. Wow, you got it. But you see what I'm saying? At some point, if football doesn't work out, I have to continue to live and provide. It goes on. I'm not, oh, please let me know. But I would like to play again. Yes, I would. But if it doesn't happen. Do you have a preference who you play for? It doesn't matter. I'll be open. Do you have certain markets you'd like to avoid? No. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'll... being under the microscope, the media capital the world, New York City might not be, it might be a great thing, might be like, a bad thing. Why? I'm yeah. just asking. No, I'm good. Wherever I am, I'll be open. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Okay, full circle back to what we began talking uh -huh. about. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. When you finish your domestic violence counseling yes, classes, sir. you've said many times you would like to have Evelyn back. What chances would you give that? Do you, do you think there's any chance at all she would have you back? You, you want to know something funny about the situation? Is, is I'm not even divorced. Because I signed papers and I put the wrong name. Oh my God. On so purpose? I'm not, she on purpose. You know, I messed up. I took vows. I messed up my life disrespecting those vows. So, I'm still married, as do far you, as I'm concerned. Do you believe she would have you back full time? If you were Evelyn, would you take me back? I can't answer that because I'm man, not. The devil is alive. Can I say this for the record? Come on, man. I'm uncomfortable. With what? With all of this. I'm, I really, really believe. What part? With him? That, listen, I'm not, knocking him. I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking the show. I'm uncomfortable with it from the standpoint, your situation with, with Evelyn, outside of what was documented, right. is your Business. So why are you allowing why he's uncomfortable with this? I, I'm just saying because you got married on television. That's why. Does it matter where yeah. you get married? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Does it matter? Does it matter where right. you get married? You've tweeted about it. Does it to matter? You're not listening. You're people. not listening. Does it matter where you get married? I'm the only. This is the first time this has ever happened in the world. Really? No, but you is said the first you, problem you said everything ever, in your life is not as It always has been. Okay. Since day one, he doesn't like this. I think we should stop. Well, do you like? Tell you what. We got to wrap up this conversation. We don't have to wrap. We You've been a going. pleasure. You've got things to do. You know that. We're leaving? We're staying. You're leaving. I love, <laughs> you. I love you. I love you too. Ah, I love you. They no, love like, you like, too. Like, seriously. I, I don't know you like that. I don't want to say I love you. Just, I, 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 I but we like each other. respect you. Yeah, I respect you But as I well. really love you all. More first take after the break. He has been a pleasure. A true pleasure. Thank you, Chad Johnson. <laughs> He's uncomfortable. He can't talk about it. Stay with us. I like getting in people's I, I, I'm with you 100% on that. It, I'm with you 100% on that. Well, there. I'm not with either one of you. Is that on Let's go right here. Welcome back to First Take, everyone. We had Ch Chad Johnson on the show for about 45, 50 minutes. And um, I just kind of want to get your reaction to it, Skip. Um, what you felt. Well, let Mr. Smith go first. Okay. Well, Mr. Smith, you want to go first? I don't fault. <clears throat> I want to emphasize I don't fault neither one of you for the questions that you asked. It had to be asked. I mean, I led the way with some of them. Um, when I say I'm uncomfortable, I'm not casting aspersions on my colleagues here in any way. This is the business that we're in. When you put yourself in a position like that, you're going to get asked certain questions. But the reason why I articulated my strong level of discomfort with the infidelity questions and things of that nature is because there are multiple, multiple sides to every story. And when you get, when you decide that it's time to put yourself in somebody's bedroom, if we're going to ask Chad Johnson about his infidelity or anything like that, where's Evelyn at? We want to ask about those personal questions and behavior and some of those other, where is she at? That's where my discomfort lies because we are sitting here and we are looking at a guy that has been open enough expressing uh, sincere, what I believe to be a sincere level of contrition, which I applaud him for in that regard. But the discomfort from it all, to me, we're not shoving aside the fact that he, you know, headbutted his, 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 his wife. And ex you, yeah, you got to pay the piper for that. Whatever comes with that comes with that. You don't put your hands on a woman, period. You don't do it. And if you do it, you got to pay a price. But outside of that compartment, Outside of that issue, other issues pertaining to the modern day athlete, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, 
There are two sides. And I, for one, am sick and tired. And if I got to sound like the anti-Oprah, so be it. anti Yana Van Zandt or whatever her name is. <laughs> I don't care who it is. I respect them. I got love for them. But I am getting sick and tired of constantly seeing one professional athlete after another having to sit up, whether it be on national television, local television, radio, whatever the case may be, expressing a level of contrition because of all they've done wrong, as if they're living in a vacuum and they're the only ones doing things. There are things that lead up to it. Now, I am not married. So I'm not sitting up here being a phony talking about, well, I'm trying to protect somebody who was. I'm not married. I'm single. I can do what the hell I want to do. But I get upset. When I see the athletes themselves consistently put in a position where ultimately the inquisition elevates, it becomes to a point where, not to say that happened here because I don't think it did, but it gets to a point where it, 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 they're being excoriated or what have you. Whereas when we see the women talk to, there's a couch and there's a nice comfortable environment and, and allow us to explain and articulate and elocute ourselves extensively and gives all kinds of reasons and rationale as to what happened. You know what I realized? We never know. There's one side, there's the other side, and, and the, the truth. truth usually lies somewhere right. in the middle, which is why I am usually of the position that when it comes to somebody's personal life, mind your business. If your man or your woman was unfaithful to you, I'm sorry. It's none of my business. But when you said Ta you were time uncomfortable, out. you said no, you time weren't. Out. Are you saying or suggesting that she was not without blame here? I'm saying I, I am suggesting to you that that is entirely possible. I'm, the, I'm, I'm saying to you that I look at somebody, when I look at the age of reality TV and what some of these people are willing to do, and I look at some of the things that I saw her do on national television, she was doing an interview where she specifically said she hated the fact that her behavior on television was associated with her persona. Really? Really? That's what made you who you were. So all I'm trying to say is that these are all the things that come along with it. I am not suggesting that she committed infidelity. I don't know. But the point is, I just hate the fact this man is trying to get a job at the NFL. And obviously he's trying to resurrect himself in a multitude of areas. And he was wrong. He owned it. We know it. Nobody's giving him a pass. You certainly wasn't. I wasn't. But at the same time, for him to be sitting up here to listen to the tenor that he had to expose himself to with us and undoubtedly with others. But then I watch her, you understand, walking around doing all the interviews, blabbering about their business all over the place. It really makes me uncomfortable. There's a level of unfairness. And I understand that there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to have a problem with me because they're going to look at it. Oh, he put his hands on her. I am not condoning it. I have never put my hands on a woman. You understand? And I never will. And anybody that touched a woman that I love, if it was a male, he's going to have a problem. So let's be clear about that. But even then, at the same time, I would tell any woman that I love, family, friends, or otherwise, I would sit there and say, be mindful and cognizant of the things that you do to make sure you never incite, no matter how wrong, egregious, or whatever it is, that it would be to do something wrong to a woman. Be mindful of the provocation that you can engage in so you can make sure you avoid these situations. We don't talk about that enough. Typical dude coming up here, I was wrong, I was wrong, I was wrong. Where's she at? Where is she? She didn't do anything. She's completely blameless. Come on, man. I, I just get tired of that sometimes. That's all I'm saying. And this is not about him putting his hands on her. He was wrong to do it, and he should be punished for it. I'm talking about the other stuff. I get tired of people. I get tired of too many females getting that pass. I'm tired of it. You're saying he should get a pass for no, his infidelity? No, not at all. Not at all. I'm saying we don't know what happened. You're saying okay. you don't want to discuss the I'm infidelity? saying I don't want to. That's none of my business. Okay. okay. It's none and, of my business. It's, all right. it's my business. Okay. It's the show's business because the, the one bombshell that I got from Chad today was all I'd read about, I'd heard about, the innuendo of, gee, she found a condom in his trunk. That ignited this argument that took place in the front seat of mm -hmm. their smart car. I didn't know if that was true. And not only did he fess up, he readily, he said, I made a huge mistake. He wasn't talking about getting physical with her. He was talking about what precipitated the argument. He said, I did something that meant nothing to me. And I had to, I pushed him two or three times. Yeah. You mean 
hitting her meant nothing to you? No, you know what I'm talking about. And he was trying to be sarcastic with right. me. Yeah, I knew exactly what he's talking about because he meant whatever affair he had five weeks into, I assume he had it ongoing through the first five weeks of his marriage, which is why he should have never married her in the first place because I'm not sure he's capable of being faithful to anyone. It's the way he's always been built. That's an issue he's going to have to deal with going forward. But in this case, I had to find out what ignited the argument. Did she ignite it? Was that the truth, the condom story? And he basically said, yeah, I did it, and she caught me. That's what he was saying. And he's, he's saying, because of that, it escalated, and I, to use his word, I beat her. I don't know if it was a headbutt or a fist, or I don't know what they it was. He said it was a headbutt. Okay, whatever it was, he I don't did, know for he sure. He did use those words. Yeah, he well, used well, the word to, beat. To I me, beat her. To me, to, me, to me, the bombshell was that, not the other stuff. But let me tell you why. Skip Bayless, in the interest of full disclosure as a reporter, let me tell you, all of these athletes will remain nameless. I covered an athlete that was in his hotel room in Chicago for a road game that was crying for an hour. You know why he was crying? Because he had to go home. He wanted to stay on the road, and he knew he had to go home yeah. to his wife. I know of an athlete, the sport doesn't matter, who ultimately was vilified because of a domestic dispute with his wife. Nope. There's no reason to put your hands on a woman. But for the men out there, just ask them this question. If you walked in on your woman in the middle of an act with another man, can you rule out the possibility of what you might do? All I'm trying to say to you is that I can name numerous occasions when those things have happened. Now, I'm of the mindset, because I was raised by a woman, ain't never an excuse to put your hands on a woman. I'm saying let's get beyond that because that's a given. You put your hands on a woman, you in trouble, you deserve to go to jail. Period. No excuses. But I'm saying when you are in the aftermath of it all and now you are trying to explain the things that led up to stuff, I'm saying we live in a society that glosses over it all. Because nothing matters. Only the incident itself mattered. Well, what about the numerous incidences that took place where there was no violence involved, but somebody was doing things in your life, male or female? Because it could be, it's, 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 most of the time, women are the ones done wrong. I'm willing to fess up to that. Women are more, uh, sincerely more victimized or more victims than we are. With but, infidelity. Uh, oh, no question. Okay. No question. Yeah. But I'm saying, in the age that we're living in, with the things that go on, with people willing to sell their soul to get ahead, to get a TV deal, to get some money, to get marketing, et cetera, et cetera. You got all of this stuff going sure. on, and it never gets brought up. Wait, hold That's on. my problem. Hold on. Skip, it never gets brought Skip, up. You said the reason why you didn't have a problem talking about the infidelity was because you said he, that's what led to the actual yeah. Look, th this, reason this, this for him being arrested. This wasn't Evelyn saying, Chad, would you take out the trash, please? And he said, would you quit nagging? me and they got into a to a skirmish in the kitchen that led to him smacking her yeah. okay that happens a lot okay in this case it went way beyond that she found a condom five weeks into their marriage you, you again and you're saying you don't know if she's without blame I think in this case she's without blame as far as what provoked that incident in that car she is completely without blame as far as he's oh, concerned I totally, he took the complete listen, fall listen and and guess what you're missing my point we live in a society where if that man wants what he claims he wants, he has no choice but to take that position. He has no choice but to shoulder all the blame. He has no choice but to sit there on and fall on his sword and, and, and even admit to things he may not have done. You know why? You think he's admitting what he didn't I don't, do? I'm, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is I know of many instances it has. You have to remember, we're using the Chad Johnson situation to springboard to a bigger issue with me. And the bigger issue with me is the multitude of professional athletes that I have encountered that have to fall on their sword and take positions even when they feel wholeheartedly that they have the truth on their side but the truth will be held against them from a societal perspective which will deny them the opportunity to move forward why because we live in a society that says oh no this is how it looks you better own up to this because if you say anything else you're going to look like even more of a victim that's what i'm saying and that's the 